Well, hey, welcome uh, to episode 279 of the Clive Barker podcast. Uh, for those of you uh, watching this on YouTube, this is video. It's it's not just an audio podcast. Yeah, we're uh, we're well into the video dimension again. <laughs> yeah. So for for episode 279, and we had talked about doing this, and and uh, and now we finally did it. But uh, that we we played. Cult Divinity Lost, the tabletop uh, horror RPG, uh, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, this this first episode uh, is going to be uh, part one of three. I'm thinking is there's a, it's a it was almost four hours long, so I figure an hour and a half, an hour twenty minutes per episode. So we won't spoil anything, um, but it was a lot of fun. We had. Uh, um, the GM was Mitchell Wallace, who who works for for the publisher of, of Cult Divinity Lost, and yeah, then, he was marketing director for, for uh, Hell Hellgas, I think. Yeah, and we we played a family of uh, of of Cuban expatriates in uh, in 1967 Florida, which yeah, was... <laughs> very dysfunctional family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, terrible. And uh, Jose, you were the, the the patriarch, the father. Yes, I was Raphael, the the very angry, very drunk patriarch, uh, very yeah. rowdy kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, uh, very confrontational, and expecting everyone to do whatever he says. And it's and I, family, damn it. I, I played the second son, uh, Anton, because the 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 uh, the crux of the story is that the first son, firstborn son, Eduardo. Had stayed behind in Cuba to uh, to fight in the revolution, and he was just now coming home. And hilarity ensues. Not all is what it seems. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Catalina from Little Spark Films has been on our on our podcast before. She played Soul, the the seven year old daughter. Uh, and then um, a couple of friends of mine here in Fairbanks played uh, Brant and Bridget. They played uh, twins, uh, Learco and Ramira. Yeah, yeah. The psychic twins. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that they could speak to each other psychically at first. And uh, and then Raul, um, from uh, who uh, I've been talking to on the Discord chat, uh, was in Spain. Uh, all the way from yeah. Spain, he was playing Novia. Raul from Valencia, Spain. Hey, it was great meeting you, Raul. Yeah, yeah, super awesome. <laughs> he did great. He's been um, helping out with a lot of the interviews for the book as well. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's been super helpful, and he's gotten us uh, a lot closer to, to finishing. So thank you so much, Raul. And it was really fun uh, to, to play this game with you. And it makes me want to do this more. I think we had talked about uh, we had, we we've been kind of talking about maybe doing this next year. You know, um, we'll see. We've got to, you know, depending on how much other stuff we have to talk about how much output Clive has and whatnot. Um, but yeah, yeah, so this was fun. Um, episode 279, Cult Divinity Lost, part one. Uh, all right, so before we head on, let's all introduce ourselves out of character, uh, because if we're going to do this, we need to know who we each, each other are and kind of where uh, we can find you if there's any retribution to be had. Uh, my name is Mitchell. Uh, I'm the marketing director for Helmgast, which produces uh, Cult Divinity Lost. Uh, I also write for TTRPGs, and I run a lot of games and uh, have a few Twitch channels. Um, my favorite color was purple. I think it's shifting to pink, kind of that hot, vibrant, in-your-face pink. Um, my favorite food is really anything Asian from, like, Chinese, Japanese, Indian, like in anything over there. I like spices, so it's just amazing stuff. Uh, what else? I have a two-year-old, and I am moving to Baltimore in like two weeks. Uh, oh, wow. And I say that because it's just like a bunch of stressful things in a little bag. <laughs> um, From where? Uh, Laurel, D.C., really. Uh, so okay. not too far. Um, it's just, you know, City. It's just moving. <laughs> yeah, move, which is like, oh god, especially during especially this time. With a small child, and right now. Yeah, because like I keep strapping boxes to his back, and he doesn't take them that far. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna have to figure out some some better way to get him to move boxes. Uh, but we're we're figuring that out. 
Uh, so yeah, it's a pleasure to meet everyone. So let's go around. Uh, Joe, I'm just going to put you on the spot because you're sure. like to my left. Okay. Uh, well, I'm uh, Jose. I uh, actually am one of the co-hosts of the Barker cast, the Clive Barker podcast. And uh, we were kindly approached by you guys to uh, to play a little bit of RPG with Cult. Um, and uh, what's my favorite color is blue, I guess. Um, I'm sitting here in beautiful Ohio. It's nice and sunny outside. I got a kitty cat right next to me. And she Aww. might end up joining the dinner party. And um, yeah, I don't have any kids. And I am... I've never played RPG before, so I'm kind of the guinea pig here, one of the guinea pigs, and I'm going to be the patriarch of this dinner party, so uh, I'm looking forward to trying it out, you know, just, I've never done improv before, but I know the comedy comes in threes, so. Yep. <laughs> All right, we'll go down to Raul. Raul? Oh, man, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yes. No, no. I think it's. Um, I sometimes have problem with the uh, the Wi-Fi, so I'm connected to yeah, my wi father's Wi-Fi. Anyway, uh, I'm Raúl. I live in Spain, in the in the region of Valencia, and I'm here basically because uh, I've been talking for a lot of time uh, with uh, Ryan. I am a follower of the Barker Cast, so uh, I'm uh, I'm still in the way of being a um, Barker. Uh, hardcore fan because I'm still a beginner. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I work in a facility um, uh, um, as a therapist for the elderly because I work with people with Alzheimer and that's what I do. And anyway, and uh, my uh, character in this game is Novia Prieto. So we will see what happens. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... The next one, I guess I, I can uh, give the lift to Ryan now. Okay. Yeah, throw it to Ryan. All right. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Ryan. I'm also one of the hosts of the Clive Barker podcast. Um, I like black and red. <laughs> I live in Fairbanks, Alaska. <laughs> it's uh, 7, oh, actually 7.45 in the morning here as we're recording. Um, what else? I have a nine-year-old son who's asleep upstairs right now. Um, How much Hellraiser has has he seen? Uh, zero. <laughs> he's he's afraid of all movies. It doesn't matter if they're horror movies or comedies or children's oh, movies or cartoons. He won't watch anything on TV. Uh, I was watching The Thing with my two-year-old, and I, I like it because he knows when bad things are happening, he'll point it and be like, oh, no. And I'm like, yeah, that does suck for that person. <laughs> fine, though. Like, he's like, yeah, oh, no. And yeah. I was like, yeah. No, he's got anxiety issues, I guess. So, I don't know. Oh, join the club. It's... Yeah. <laughs> this whole year has been anxiety-inducing. When the sun goes down in Fairbanks, Alaska, you fight vampires. That's what I was thinking. Like, I didn't want to say 30 days a night, but I was thinking it the whole time. It's not as bad as you think. Like, only a couple of vampires? Well, really, you get so pale that the vampires can't tell you're not ah, a vampire. Ah, there so. we go. Yeah. <laughs> you just kind of blend in. It's kind of weird, though, when you get, like, four or five hours of sunlight. That yeah. Would... Or one and a half. <laughs> Man. All right, Brant. I think that's a good segue over to you. Uh, my name is Brant. I'm uh, up here in Fairbanks with Ryan. I'm um, just kind of an old gaming buddy of his. Um, funny story. I'd actually have the original cult um, book. I want it. Up here in, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so up here in Fairbanks uh, at the dump. You kind of go to the community dump, but there's like a shed place where you put stuff where you can reuse called the transfer site. And uh, some other old gaming buddies of mine showed up one day to drop their trash off. And there was crates and crates and crates of different gaming stuff, like full wow. AD&D sets. Um, we just figured somebody was getting married and had to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so lost that one was friend my that. first introduction to cult. Um the old 1993 edition. 
Uh, and so Brian asked me to participate in this. I like that there's a place that people put their stuff and you can also take it. Yeah, it's kind of a little beautiful anarchistic paradise up here. That is awesome. <laughs> Sometimes they converge on you. <laughs> yeah. you. You just you just want to go drop garbage in the dumpster and they converge on you and start ta- trying to take stuff out of your truck. Yeah. What do you got there? You got some good stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Start putting the car in there too. Mm-hmm. All right, Bridget, I believe you are right next to Brant. I am. Oh, there you go. (laughs) Phantom arm. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Bridget, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm Bridget. Um, I'm also in Fairbanks, Alaska. I'm originally from Ohio. I don't have much experience with role-playing games. And my other game, I just play a bird. So... Uh. Um, a bird? Yeah, like a like a humanoid bird that rolls around in trash. Oh, what is this? Uh, is it D and D? Is that the what is it? That uh, okay. I was trying to figure out if you were just an actual bird who chilled out in the game, or if you were like you know that that bird race. <laughs> and um, yeah, I guess that is on par with who I am really. Like I like taxidermy. I shot a moose the other day. Um, <laughs> Casually throw that out there, okay? It's like we have dinner. Yeah. Is this just is this a casual thing in Alaska? I've never fired a gun, so kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah we did. Man. I grew up here. We didn't buy meat, so holy heck! But no, I have to check out Alaska one day. You should. Everybody should. Yeah. Uh, is it some days you don't even use guns? You just like take out the moose or whatever just i wish no you punch them in the nose yeah <laughs> it's funny because i used to live in arizona until a short time ago and i would text ryan say hey i'm in the pool and ryan would be like i'm shoveling snow <laughs> Boy. and what's your favorite color bridget oh um Mm, I guess black or blue. Black or blue. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Catalina. Morning. Um, I'm Catalina, and I was invited to do this by Barker Cast, or at least that's what my husband tells me, but I don't remember seeing an actual invitation. <laughs> so I'm just kind of here. Just wandered into the Zoom chat. <laughs> yeah. Just added you into the chat. <laughs> um, and uh, I live in Arlington, Texas. So that's actually uh, right outside of Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, it's where the Cowboys play. And the, the I don't know, it's all the sports junk. Um, but we're not sports people. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have a favorite color. I mean, I guess it would be, it would probably be purple. Um, which, by the way, you have very, very lovely hair. Uh, Mitch, sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, everyone here has lovely hair. uh, I'm still, even though we've been living on Zoom for several months, I'm still one of those people that'll go, oh, you know, the person to my right, even though I'm fully aware that it's different for everyone. Yeah, it should be the Um, same. I feel like that's a feature they need to put in. And uh, I am the co-founder of Little Spark Films, and we do uh, horror movies and generally spooky things. And apparently our thing that we're stuck with this year is Rome, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet and we can't fucking escape it. What? Like, can you put links on the stuff uh, in uh, the chat? Well, no, it's just like we have, we were given a script and this guy thinks that he's convinced that it's a Romeo and Juliet script. It's not, but he thinks it is. <laughs> and then we were just uh, hired to do act- an actual Shakespearean Romeo and Juliet in like November. So it's just, I don't but know. It's, we're going to, we're going right? to we're going to hone. No, it's not. It's just regular. So we're oh. going to have to hone our Shakespearean uh, obsession to something else next year because I can't do it. That's fair. That's fair. Just, and just I, do cold stuff. I see from the posters behind you that you're into romantic comedies, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the six pack on that man. It does it. Yeah, where's my my ashy slashy is actually he's over there somewhere. Oh, the little doll from the the TV series. Yeah, oh yeah. Gosh, I I, really I like also it. am a perf- I also uh, do a lot of musical theater stuff. 
but that's obviously halted. Yeah, well, that's awesome. I mean, you're you're ready to go. We're glad you you swooped in here. All right. <clears throat> So with that, I think we are ready to hop into this thing. <laughs> we should probably do an introduction. Yeah, echoes and stuff. Um, so Ryan, since you're kind of the, the head of, of this uh, project, uh, why don't uh, we uh, do a cue? You introduce kind of who we are in a general sense. Uh, the Clive Parker, it's our Clive Parker podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Clive Parker as Spider-Man would be pretty cool though. Yeah. Yeah. So we thought, you know, this, for this, uh, we're on like episode 278 of the Clive Barker podcast. And I think, um, we thought this would be fun to try out. Um, you, you had contacted us about possibly, reviewing uh the 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 game and i thought the what's the best way to review it is to let's play it what is that <laughs> uh this is my little helper this is mini mitch uh um, okay i got it made in china uh oh, my wow. son tried to destroy it which is why he's bald but uh he'll, he'll pop <laughs> i was gonna in say he now. looks like he's older than than uh, actual mitch yeah <laughs> <laughs> he's been through some things Go ahead. I just wanted to introduce that. Oh, yeah. No, so um, I have some experience with Dungeons & Dragons but and other some other games in the 80s and 90s, and that's about it, but nothing like Cult. So this will be really interesting. Yeah, Cult Divinity Lost is definitely one of those super interesting games. When it first came out, it was kind of like not allowed in certain places in the US and our recent Kickstarter, we have this special scenario book that we can't release in stores because there's a lot of problematic content, uh, but uh, you can only get on the Kickstarter itself. So it, it's definitely one of those um, games that really kind of tries to push the envelope in terms of horror and and stuff like that, which I'm, I'm a huge fan of uh, as long as people are like super excited and, and feel comfy while doing it. But today we are playing uh, Lesina, uh, which is one of my favorites done, uh, written by Jacqueline uh, Brick, uh, who is an amazing, wonderful artist. Um, so yeah. So this is Miami 1967. Uh, Rafael and Anna Cruz uh, haven't seen their eldest son, Eduardo, since the beginning of the Cuban Revolution. With the news of his booking on the last freedom flight of the month, they have planned an extravagant dinner to welcome him home. All of his immediate family will be there, his parents, his aunt, his younger siblings, everyone, except for his mom in this case, uh, who will be sick in bed for the entirety of, of this scenario. All in one dining room over seven courses, we are going to dramatically uh, reflect the true feelings and issues of this uh, familia uh, here in this in the oppressive humidity of Florida, uh, which right there uh, is when I knew I would love it because that freaks me out the most. I hate humidity. Um, so this is all based in 1967. Um, you guys uh, are coming to the airport, ready to pick up Eduardo. You haven't seen him in quite some time. <clears throat> the Florida airport is a small little strip uh, for kind of like the last uh, Freedom flights coming in. Um, it's, due, it's going over some renovations. Uh, so you can kind of imagine the tiles on the top of the ceiling every now and then missing. So you can see kind of like the silver pipes just beyond it. A little bit of spider webs as well as that thick whatever the hell that is on the corner that you always see at airports. Like the unfamiliar colorization of green, brown, and maybe a slight yellow kind of marinating in the corner of some of these tiles. Um it's humid, it's hot, the AC wasn't working. So if you can, I mean, everyone can imagine, and maybe some of the can't because you guys uh, from Alaska, uh, but you can imagine the hot, 
humid, sweaty days where you just want to punch anyone who comes in close proximity because you can feel the temperature rise as people kind of shuffle in and out and you, you feel their sweat kind of drag along your shoulders, leaving that little sweat line uh, that is gross and intermingling with your own sweat, which tastes of severe salt. Um, you kind of taste it on your lips a little bit. People are breathing into your cheek, which only makes things a little bit hotter. Someone definitely didn't brush their teeth this morning. Um, as you go through the sliding doors into this um, okay airport, we're not going to sugarcoat it. It's five out of 10 stars at best. Um, but just beyond, you can see the glass, which hasn't really be cleaned much. It kind of has the uh, frosted uh, dirt uh, accumulating over several months, probably, and several airplanes on the other side of it. Um, security is lax. Um, several security guards are really just kind of smoking outside, um, which kind of just adds to the heat. Watching someone smoke always kind of makes me feel a little bit hotter. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the moment that you guys have been waiting for, uh, either enthusiastically, anxiously, uncomfortably, uh, hesitantly for the last couple of weeks. Eduardo is finally coming back. And with that, we're going to let everyone kind of describe your character. And why don't you give an insight onto how you are feeling about this return? Uh, so we are going to go over first. Uh, to the patriarch, uh, Raphael. Hello, I'm Raphael. Uh, I don't want to be here. Uh, I, my son has left the house uh, for a long time, and uh, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, I, I am a very Catholic guy, uh, but I am a hypocrite because <laughs> I, I cheat on my wife um, and I have some really dark secrets. And so I'm just really cranky about being in this airport. I don't like the revolution going on. I am just very, very hot and bothered. Nap description. Uh, Novia Prieto. Uh, how are you doing today? What are you wearing? What are you up to? What you doing? Uh, well, I'm, of course, Novia Prieto, and uh, I'm one of the servants in the house. Uh, I came to the States because uh, I came with the Freedom Protigia uh, many years ago. And uh, well, um, just serving in the house. I have also one, uh, one children, well, uh, one child here. And I uh, take care uh, about uh, her. And uh, I don't know what else. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Ramira. I'm Ramira. I'm the eldest twin. And um, as far as this, I think I'm at board at the airport. And um, but glad that Eduardo is coming because then our parents can focus on someone other than us. Yeah, I do kind of wish mom was here. <laughs> That's a perfect introduction to Learso. Uh, yeah, I'm Learso. I'm kind of with my twin sister. This is uh, we tend to get dragged along in this family chaos enough. Um, it's a little nice. Mom's not here to dote on us, but also kind of messed up. She's not. Excellent. Anton. All right. Well, <clears throat> I'm Anton. I am the uh, middle son. And if I bet if it were me coming to the airport, they would have just told me to take a taxi. But because it's Eduardo, everybody loves Eduardo. He's so great. He is great. He is much better than you, but. <laughs> Don't you do what your brother did. <laughs> All right, and finally, Sol. I'm Sol. I'm the youngest of the Cruz family, and I want to be back home. 
it's hot and this is boring and I don't know what the big deal is. That is fair. All right, so you guys can start seeing passengers start to filter through the gate, um, each one sporting the typical sponge of sweat right below their, their neckline, um, wearing suits and ties despite the awkward weather. Um, and so now you're just kind of waiting for hopefully Eduardo to come out soon. It's hot, so hopefully he's not like all the way in the back. One can hope that he's not all the way in the back. I want to uh, just kind of lean back against the wall and make uh, smart alecky judgments about everybody's clothes, and um, but only in my head to my sister, twin sister. And so just nobody else can hear us, but I'm just making snarky remarks about everybody that's coming off the, off the plane. I got, I got to hear some examples. Um, well, what is, you know, what's the first guy look like or woman? Uh, the first man comes out with a turtleneck, um, kind of black, uh, this almost rug looking material. Um, well, he's not going to last long. <laughs> that one's going to melt like an old fat popsicle. He's sweating grease already. <laughs> Ramita, I... what do you say? I think you're um, muted or you're not. The mic's not catching you. Oh, I'm just going to kind of chuckle, silently chuckle, and then look for someone else to make fun of. <laughs> Excellent. And you were about to say something, uh, Rafael? I wish I had a drink. And uh, Hamira, Liarco, pay attention to your sister, Saul. Don't let her go into the middle of the people. Yep. Yes, father. And then I'm there's absolutely not, not watching, watching my sister. <laughs> <laughs> Looking out, that's fire. Um, and this is the, you know, as you're picking off uh, sniping people and their emotionally um, charged hearts, um, you see Eduardo. Um, he doesn't look that different from the last time you saw him. There's still that uh, that same smile, the the crinkle just beyond his cheeks, the um, uh, the brown eyes that kind of have a very distinct color to it, uh, familiar within your sights. Um, he looks around as if he's trying to find you guys. Look to you. Look who's here. It's Eduardo. I stay silent and cross my arms, just waiting for Eduardo to come up to me and say something. Yeah, can I just give him a, like a once-over look? Can you do like a move, like read a person? Yeah, of course. All right, our first move. So 2D10, uh, read a person um, is intuition. Ooh, I got a 13. All right. So read a person at 13. You get to ask me one question uh, about this person. What about do you Eduardo. Want to know? Mm -hmm. What's the largest change since the last time I saw him? At first glance, what seems to have changed the most? Yeah, there was a depth, uh, a little fright and anxiety uh, just beyond his brown eyes. And one would think because of the recent changes in this, you know, new world he's flying into that that same sort of anxiety would be right on his face. But there's a sense of calm about him that you don't remember Eduardo ever having. Okay. I want to psychically ask my sister. He seems extra calm, doesn't he? Maybe Eduardo's finally settled down. I want to wave him over and cheerily, you know, greet him. Hey, big brother. Good to see you again. 
And Eduardo comes up and like this whole place is super crowded. So you guys are kind of like smushed in between people going around you. Uh, you feel the slight touches and body heat moving past you as he goes through and kind of joins your little huddle. Um, he's wearing kind of like this caramel looking uh, top uh, buttoned up uh, with nice pristine collar Um kind of brown pants as well uh, with a black belt. Um, it looks like he took off his tie recently. You can kind of still see the the sweat marks going kind of around the, the collar. Uh, short brown hair with short uh, brown eyes uh, gazing at you guys uh, with some, a little bit of uh, trepidation. Um, I turn to Eduardo and say, do you have your bags? Do you need to go get any bags? And I roll uh, influence other, and I try to get him to move away from me. <laughs> All right. Why don't you go ahead? So 2d10. Um, All right. I've rolled. What's your charisma? 11. All right. So you get to choose one uh motivated to do what you ask uh and you get and they get a plus one uh to do that task um and then the other one is worried what might happen if she doesn't do what you ask it gets a minus two so i guess are you more motivating or are you more fear-mongering i i guess i'm trying to to get him to move away from me i don't want to hug him i don't want to hug you so i'm trying to get you to go get your bag all right, we'll we'll say um, kind of a little bit of an intimidation. It, it feels like as he takes a few steps back and kind of goes back into the crowd of fish uh, to retrieve his luggage, mm. leaving you guys alone in this huddled mass. I'll kind of read the tension, and while they're like to interfere, I'll kind of go up and hug him and walk off with him to get his bags. Oh, so how was your flight, Eduardo? Uh, it was, it was fine. Um, they ran out of water, so, um, you know, parched, it's hot on the plane. Um, but honestly, it didn't feel as hot as it was, um, compared to here. This place is kind of oppressive. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like this year round, but it's worse in the summer. Yay. Not the, the cool ocean breeze of Cuba. Yeah. But uh, I appreciate you coming along. Where's your uh, sister? Oh, she's, uh, I don't know. She's probably back with Papa. Yeah. All right. And kind of the, the trolley goes around and he grabs uh, this is brown suitcase. Um was kind of like his name etched into the side of the leather. This is it. Uh, Looks like Brown's in this year, huh, big brother? Yeah, it... Uh, 1967, I guess it was. <laughs> You'll brown. get used to the heat. I think your mother still misses Cuba, but uh, she's kind of sick right now. But you'll see her when you get home. Uh, looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, shall we away? Uh, I got my luggage. I think I'm ready to go. I don't think I'm missing anything else. Uh, they've pretty much cleared me here. So, all right, kids, let's all go back to the car. All right, I want to psychically tell my sister that it's too bad that mom drank herself sick getting ready for Edward to get home. This is kind of fucked. As we get into the car. Yeah. And as you guys get into the, I mean, it's, it's crowded, obviously. All, everyone in this uh, taxi, um, even the the twins, like one has to be uh, on top of the other in terms of the lap. lap. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Anton, you come up front with me, and Ed, Ed, Eduardo, you go in the back. Yes, sir. All right, we take off and we putter off. 
go home. And putter off you do. The kind of familiar of the taxi kind of going forward, the uh, kind of jump in the stop uh, of an old vehicle, maybe someone not familiar with a uh, stick or manual. Um, but Raphael, this is kind of the first time you've seen your son since the screaming fight years ago. Uh, he only looks a little bit older, um, a little bit more born. Um, here are the questions that I would like to hear from you within your own mind, just kind of what you're feeling. Um, do you wish he was dead? Uh, do you uh, want to embrace him? So I look through the windshield. Uh, I look through the rearview mirror uh, at my son in the back, and I'm just trying to read, you know, how he's changed uh, through the years. I did kick him out of the house, but um, you know, secretly, I still he's still my you know firstborn, so I still have some measure of hope that he will come to his senses and do what I tell him to do. And uh, I don't, I don't wish him dead, but uh, I'm still very, very hurt. It's all about me. He didn't do what I wanted. Yeah, well, that's fair. And you probably should do what you want. So uh, I said, uh, do you, did you have a good trip? Uh, yeah, it was, it was good. Um, it was hot, but I think that's just kind of what this year is going to be. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I try to uh, do a move. I would like to read a person. I would like to read Eduardo. All right. Uh, so for this, uh, you don't need to do a move. Uh, okay. This is kind of a, a little side scene. What, what are you trying to figure out? I'm just trying to figure out uh, what he expects, he, if he expects to come back to the family and just, you know, sp uh, spend time with us long term, uh, if he expects to start his own life and just be, you know, around. Yeah. Uh, questions like that is a little bit more difficult to, to judge uh, based on the limited encounters you've had with this person uh, or who he is now. Mm -hmm. um, you could definitely tell there's uh, a calm over him. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not as anxious as you probably would think this whole meeting should be. Um, what that means, hard to say. Okay. Uh, Novia. This is the first time you've ever laid eyes on Eduardo, except from the photos you've spied carefully tucked away in uh, Anna's bureau. How do you feel? Um, and I mean, how do you feel? Oh, <laughs> uh, well, um, well, maybe I'll, uh, I'm a little bit confused. I don't know because I've been um, serving in this house for uh, uh, Rafael for so long and now I see this person who resembles well I, I actually I don't, I don't know but uh, resembles him so much so uh, I'm trying maybe to uh, think about if uh, he is the has the same character or if he is different because I don't really know yeah he definitely looks a little bit different from the photos um but yeah, a lot of complicated feelings. Uh, Anton. <laughs> Wonderful Anton. Something is wrong. Uh, your brother was your age now when you left Cuba. Uh, and he does not look that much different. It's been, you know, several years. That is weird. Um. So I've been just thinking about since I've been I was the number two son and now he's back. Am I am I being pushed back down again to be, to being number two? Uh, definitely a legit thought. Um, you should probably brood on that. Uh, and later so and Ramira. Um, it's, it's weird, as you guys are in close proximity in this taxi, there is something that 
starts to raise your heartbeats. Um, you guys cannot talk to each other like you normally do. It's not possible. The more you try to reach out to each other, it's static, almost painful. I want to just give her a knowing look. Do we make an action, some sort of action to try to commute, you know, just through body language, you know, give her the old... Yeah, you guys don't have to do a move. You guys can kind of uh, uh, communicate simple things to each other just via body motions and such. I would just like to communicate my alarm. Just kind of... Also, I had a a question. Uh, (laughs) I may have missed it. Where has Eduardo been? He's been in uh, Cuba. He's still been in Cuba. Mm-hmm. And he just did not come with us when we fled? Okay. Yeah, he stayed uh, during the, the whole revolution and He's such. Tommy? <laughs> Basically, yeah. Well, he's something more than he was, because this has never happened before. Yeah, it freaky uh so you both uh why don't you each do a keep it together roll as 2d10 plus your willpower this is something frightening and new uh and young people do not like the frightening and the new oh yeah i got a six i don't like it at all i got a what one no it's a 10 oh Oh, wait no i was on the wrong character so we're in a taxi, oh, yeah, right? I'm not driving. Yeah, yeah. You're you're okay. too. I mean, come on. You got you got money. You're not going to drive yourself. You got to keep up those appearances. It's a oh, nice taxi, you know. Gotcha. Uh, so, so I rolled an eleven. All right, cool. So, uh, later, so uh, you got a nine or below, right? Yeah. Um, so you're going to take minus two stability. Uh, this is really emotionally traumatic for you uh being cut off from your twin sister in in this regard it's it's frightening and terrifying and you've never felt so alone um on your character sheet you just kind of mark the tabs as you slowly go down the stability track for you uh ramira um it's not as bad um you're kind of keeping it together a little bit better than uh your brother um but you get to make a choice uh you can become angry sad scared guilt-ridden uh obsessed distracted haunted by this in a a future uh situation but how how is your general feel about this i think i'd be more I guess I'd be more angry because at this point, like my head's hurting and we're in this cramped car and I'm sitting on him. So I think I'm just kind of wriggling around trying to like hold my head like I have a tension headache or. Excellent. Yeah. And it's irritating. All right. Minus one stability. I wish I could figure out a way to control everyone's thermostats. That would be really cool for this scenario. Maybe next time, let's turn it all the way up to 100. So can I notice that she's wriggling in her seat and, and tell her, Hamida, you need to sit up straight. Stop stop fidgeting. You know, we're almost at home. Do I try to roll a move? For she's fine, seven? Pops. Ah, leave, leave her, her alone. alone. <laughs> I think I'm going right. to try to side-eye glare you without you seeing. Typical kids. And finally, over to Soul. You're curious uh, about this new older brother of yours. He seems different from everyone else somehow, though you can't really place it. It might just be his past experience living uh, during that time will definitely change a person, but what are your thoughts? I'm hungry. (laughs) I thought we were going to have dinner. I've been pretty excited about dinner. (laughs) <laughs> it's taking forever and it's hot and I want to go back to my room because there's a lot going on and I'm just generally uncomfortable too much going on yeah and it doesn't help that you guys are stuck in traffic the AC isn't working um, 
So you're kind of having to roll down the windows, but you're choosing, do, all, do you want to roll down the windows and get that musky, atmospherical heaviness of Florida weather, or do you roll it up and just kind of breathe in each other's uh, bad breath um, during this excruciating uh, ride? Uh, and it doesn't help that the driver has this sort of eclectic taste in music. It's almost like whiplash as you go from like jazz to rock to uh, um, kind of uh, bachata music. Like it's just all over the place and you can never really quite get the feel of it. It doesn't help you to distract um, from the, the atmosphere and the weather. If anything, it just kind of brings your attention to it in this claustrophobic heat ridden vehicle i am uh, i'm fanning myself with a paper fan and i tell novia can you roll down the window for Saul and make sure that she gets some fresh air oh of course yes sir i will do my, my chores and i will obey <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> yeah and it's it's that you know it's the annoying like you know the little hand crank thing where it's like, it's like <gasps> 50 of them just to get it down like one inch. Yeah, so I, I'm repressing my feelings. Yeah, and keep cool on doing the chores, I guess. Excellent. I'm going to stick my head out the window so that way I don't have to be in the car with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm going to call out uh, Eduardo and say, hey, it seems to me you, you look like you haven't aged at all. Is it, um, what's your secret? I guess it's in my genes. Um, we have uh, the same genes, man. <laughs> yeah, you look nice and and young yourself. Um, yeah, it's I, easy to stay young when you don't work hard. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there with your with your revolutionary friends back in Cuba, right? How's that going? Dad, I, I prefer not to talk about this. Uh, oh, okay, okay, all in, right, in whatever. Here. I, I, I know how you feel, and I'm sorry I didn't come with you, but I believed in what we did, and I still do, and I don't think I want to get into that with you right now. Did you shoot anybody? No, not really. I want to. I want to read a person and see if he was lying to me when he said it was just his genes. <laughs> Go ahead. That was... uh, I got a fifteen. Ooh. Uh it's not. There's a, a slight kind of uh, movement of the eye, which suggests that it's not something he really believes in. Maybe it's not your genes. Maybe you're not as awesome as you think. I'm going to I'm going to side eye him. Of course he could just be better than you, Anton. <laughs> so awesome. may I read a person to see if he's telling the truth about shooting somebody? Oh, uh you don't have to. For this case, you kind of get a sense that um There, if, unless someone's trained, people generally kind of have this uh, instinct to not shoot at people. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, uh, mental conditioning to shoot at another person. So you kind of get that sense that he's trying to say that shot at person in kind of the most lax of sense uh, shot around a person, but never actually yep. attempted to, to kill Do people hear the creepy? Yeah, yeah. it's really faint. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> That's my kid. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you guys eventually arrive, uh, right? Uh, it takes a while, but... Uh, and this whole time is just this horrific, awkward silence stuck in between sort of jabs at each other. Uh, but you guys see your house. Uh, <laughs> up. Hey! Uh, what time is it? Uh, it's kind of just past the afternoon. Um, yeah, still a little, little ways away from dinner, which is usually around like six or seven. Okay. 
I say, um, Anton, help your brother with his bags and, you know, let's let's get ready for dinner. Yeah, I want to give him a quick what hug and say, good to see you, big brother, and then grab my sister and immediately run to our room. Good, yeah. <laughs> um, can we, like, can we talk to each other psychically after we get a certain distance away? No. I uh, I wave Novia to come close to me with uh, Saul, and I say, "All right, go go back in the house and uh, see if Saul needs anything." I need a snack. All right, give her a snack. <laughs> okay, Saul, so you need to be patient. We have a lot of things to do, so we will uh, do it in proper time. I'm hungry now. No, you must wait because <laughs> no, Dad said he needs food now. Papa said food now. Just just give her some food now and whatever. <laughs> it's here, as you wish. Yeah. You can pretty much go to the kitchen. And this place is wonderful. It's a it's a mansion with kind of uh, an old Spanish style to it. Uh, with this lovely uh, ceramic tiles, uh, windows, as well as some kind of mosaics on the side. Uh, beautiful colors are on several of the windows uh, depicting almost Catholic sort of images. Um, you have a nice driveway with a black gate. Um, you know that um, there's a pool right behind the house. Uh, Raphael has definitely done a lot of good things, um, at least financially for this family. Um, as we walk into the house, I just come over to Eduardo and I say, uh, can I, can I just talk to you for a minute? Sure. So I know that, uh, you've been doing some, some stuff back in Cuba and I just want to let you know, this is my house and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna accept any of your revolutionary nonsense in here and, uh, what, what is your plan? What do you intend to do now? I, I don't want you living with us, so I, I just want to know what your intentions are. Can we just get past dinner before we talk about business? Okay. Papa, I mean, I just got here. Um, all right, all right. We'll just have we'll just have dinner. We'll just have Sina, and then we'll talk about that. That's fine. I, I think your mother might want to watch, might want to see you. So, I think your mother is going to be happy. Cool. I'll. Um... Uh, I guess I'll put my stuff in the guest room and we'll connect back in a couple hours. Okay. And he kind of walks off. All right. Yeah, so what's everyone up to during this kind of downtime you have? Well, obviously we're freaking out as we're getting dressed for dinner. There's something up. With her good word, though. I am. Uh, I'm, I'm, I pay the cabbie and I go into the house and I'm. I'm just looking at at Novia take care of Saul, and I'm uh, just taking my jacket off, and just sitting in my favorite chair, lording over the room. Lording. <laughs> I got some fruit from Novia and went back to my room to get away from everything and try to decompress because there's a yeah. lot going on emotionally. Yeah, uh, I give some food for, uh, to Sol and now I'm in the kitchen preparing all the dishes. So I'm working right now. Yeah, and it's kind of around this time that uh, Anna um, uh, comes in. I mean, she she's still in kind of her her bed gown um, looking slightly ill as she kind of looks over the dishes, um, kind of takes a fork, uh, pierces the meat that you kind of have uh, getting ready and gets a taste of it. And she looks over at you, Novia. So, no, 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 bueno. Uh, this, Novia, I don't know how many times I have to tell you, but you. This is Eduardo, and I want this to be a good day, and it feels like you're not taking this seriously. So, 
So, uh, what do you would you want me to do? Uh, do you want me to prepare something different? I I yes. want you to take it seriously. I don't want you to serve garbage to my son. Okay, so um, I guess because you tasted the dish, so uh, what do you what do you think I can do it to improve it? Uh, do you want me to cook it better? Do you want me to do something else? Where it's I want you to take your job seriously. Um, okay, okay, okay. Throw this out, uh, redo it. Uh, tell uh, get someone to go get some, some more meat, something of high quality. Um, this isn't appropriate for my husband, uh, this isn't appropriate for Eduardo. Um, I'm going to come in and give her a glass of wine and say, hey, hey, it's everything's okay. I'm sure Eduardo is just happy to see us all. Everything will be fine. Anton, if I needed a deadbeat to come in here uh, and to offer me wine that is mine, I would ask Novia. I observe the situation. Deadbeat, I'm a doctor. Yeah, sure, Anton. I step uh, in and I observe the situation, and uh, so you don't I, have to observe. It's it's okay. pretty heated. Like okay. you, you you're kind of coming at the end of a very like. So uh, from my couch, I I I I say out loud to Anna, uh, "It's fine, you know. It, the food is fine. We're not going to start over again. Uh, go. Are you feeling better? Go back to your room, husband." light in my eyes uh you have your kingdom and i have my kingdom but it's Eduardo, obviously you're obvious you're not feeling good so maybe uh maybe you should get some rest eduardo go say hi to your mother <laughs> you kind of eduardo's uh kind of in the, the guest room so you, you have to yell down the hall uh <laughs> <laughs> He still isn't done, like, uh, putting his stuff away. Yeah, yeah. This typical dad, like, yelling okay. at everyone from his... So, his... so I can tell Anna, uh, Eduardo's in the guest room. Why don't you go say hi to him? Okay. Uh, Anton, get out of the kitchen. This is not where you should be. Novia, I don't want to see Saul in the kitchen again. Yes, as you wish. Hmm. I, I will not disappoint yeah, just, you. What, what do I know? Anton, go. <laughs> what do you know? Nothing. I know you're sick and you should go to bed. Is that what you learned from your education? Yes. Can Raphael? Yes. Get your son because I'm going to get some ice. Well, this is... Yeah. And you see, you just kind of walk away, uh, yeah. heading back to her room. <laughs> okay. And I tell her, at, yeah. least, at least this son came with us, and at least he's making something out of himself. Are you talking about Anton? Yes. Making something of himself. Where does he live? Well, he lives with us, but uh, that doesn't Oh, matter. yeah. Making something. Yeah, exactly. Great doctor who has to live with his parents. Yes, completely. He is doing great things. Can't even get a house. Does he have a woman? Anton, do you have a woman? Is anyone interested in you? It's, he's Leave he's me alone. Studying. He's studying hard. I mean, you know, it's... Ah, okay. So doesn't have a house, lives with his parents, has no woman. He's doing fantastic. And we're just upstairs get, helping each other get dressed. Yeah. <laughs> with different outfits. <laughs> He cares. He cares yeah. about his family. At least he's part of our family. He's not oh, like Eduardo, who took off to go with his revolutionary buddies. At least Eduardo did something for himself. Oh yeah. Well, what is he doing? Where is he living now? He just got here, Rafael. Yeah. yeah, and he's not staying. He's not because I know he's a good son. Unlike this Anton, who's been here for how long? Too long. Studying for a doctor can't even figure out his own finances to get an apartment. 
Is it that oh, yeah. important to I you was... that I get out? Yes, it's it's important for me for you to be beneficial to society instead of leeching on Raphael and and I. It takes time to become a doctor, mom. It takes time. It takes time. Are the other doctors also living with their parents? Some of them. Ah, uh, you know, I was speaking to a doctor the other day. Uh, was it doc doctor? Um, oh, I think his name was uh, Consiglio, and. He has a fiance, has an apartment. Okay, so what's your excuse? What's your job? Raphael, if you don't get a handle on your son, and she just, she, she walks off. So where is Eduardo? I'm just, I'm just side eyeing Anna because I don't respect her and I'm just waiting for her to shut up and move away. <laughs> <laughs> she should go. Um, go ahead, uh, Oh, I was asking where Edward, where Eduardo was. If he was out of his room, I was going to try to sneak in it and look through his luggage. He is currently uh, in his room, but there is a point in time where he does go outside of it to use the restroom. All right, I want to do a quick, quick sneak. Excellent. So, like an investigate. Because I'm pretty freaked out by my loss of psychic powers. <laughs> that would freak not me what out they too. Seem. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking... alone for the first time in my life. Yeah. And Ramira, are you going with your, your deer? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Coming in, like this guest room is, is kind of like the typical guest room with a, a singular um, kind of full-size bed, uh, lovely white lacing upon the, uh, the quilt. Um, the window outlooks the back to the uh, the pool, and um, there's a dresser, and up top that dresser is his suitcase. This kind of really just like this briefcase with his name embedded into it. All right. Um, so I'm gonna stand by the door. Can we, we dream to come out of the bathroom? Yes. And here, and here. And you, you distract him and talk to him if I'm not out. And, and I guess I'll just rifle, rifle through the suitcase. Perfect. Yeah, you open it up, um, and it is kind of these perfectly um, uh, folded pants, about three pairs of them, uh, two shirts. Um, a journal with nothing written in it as well as a pen uh, right by it. It seems very plain. Hmm. Can I like, feel it for extra pockets I didn't notice? Yeah. Uh, a thorough search? Yeah, you don't have to roll for the... It's, it's pretty kind of yeah. chill. Uh, it doesn't have any secret compartments. It's just... It's a normal suitcase, as far as it looks. Have you done anything else to the room? I'm going to do a quick scan. Like, I don't know, look under the bed, look at the closet. Excellent. Yeah, you kind of get down on your knees to, to look under the bed. Uh, that little dark shadow, the laces kind of of the quilt kind of go over the bed, so you have to use your hand to kind of lift it up to peer underneath it. And is there anything under the bed? <laughs> Ramira, Eduardo is approaching down the hallway. I am going to say loudly, oh, Eduardo, and I'm going to walk towards him. And I'll say, I'm so glad you're home. Here, have you seen all of the house? And I'll offer to take him on a tour. Yeah, he gets down to your level, Ramira, uh, looking at you, and you can kind of feel that spike in your head, that uh, migraine. Ramira, it's so good to see you. It's, and I'll, I'll go in for a hug, but kind of cringe because my head's hurting. I'll say, oh, I've just been having the worst headache. It must be this humidity. 
Yeah, he he hugs you and you feel his hands uh, kind of pet the, the back of your head uh, as he whispers in your ears, where's Lierso? Where's your brother? Oh, he had to deal with a few um, just typical family drama. So he was going to go spy and get some gossip. Gossip. So he's not in my room right now, right, Ramira? Correct. Why would we be in your room? You wouldn't lie to me, right? No. No, I'm not a very good liar, as you know. I know. And you can kind of feel like the the hands behind you start to tighten a little bit. Um, you have moved from a hug to a little bit something more where you kind of feel your, your joints start to creak under the, the pressure of the, the hug. So I'll try to not obviously push away but kind of try to get out of the hug and say oh it's getting very warm yeah he does not let you out of the hug and so i'll say eduardo what are what are you doing is lierso in my room ramira no he's not in your room why would you think we're he's in your room and i'll kind of be talking loudly hopefully so that my twin might hear me <laughs> and you you do hear uh Lierso, this exchange outside is there a window there out? is but it's on kind of the mm -hmm. second floor looking out towards the pool <laughs> gonna take a dive <laughs> it is not that close to the window <laughs> can I walk up to Eduardo at this point also <laughs> uh, not at this moment no okay. uh, so, so could I see you under the bed, bed? Mm -hmm. yeah under beneath the bed uh, other than kind of the cobwebs obviously a uh, something that Novia has to take care of eventually uh, it's empty there's nothing under there. And so I guess we're still in this close embrace. Yeah, he, he gets up and without oh, letting you under the bed. Uh, move, he, he grabs you by the hand and starts pulling you uh, in that way that you're kind of used to when you've done something bad uh, and dragging you towards his room. Okay, I don't know if you heard. I'm slipping into bed. You kind of roll or down. Style. So I'm trying to not be too <coughs> obvious about kind of walking slowly. So I'll just walk willingly with him. Yeah. He kind of drags you into the room and kind of like yanks your arm so that you're, you're kind of pushed into the room. Ouch, why are you so rough with me? I told you he's not in here. And then I, I, I point around the room. Here, do you see my twin? You're right, Gosh, Ramira. He's so rough with me. I'm sorry. Uh, it's been a long flight. Why don't you go ahead and leave? Um, I'm sorry. Is this, is this how you greet me? I offered to take you on a tour. I know you've had a long flight and it's very hot. Would you like me? We could go get some iced tea. No, Ramira, I'd like to be alone right now. If that's okay. Oh. Okay. Well, I could help you. Ramira. Put your things away. I'd like to be alone. All right. Well, I will talk to you, catch up later, and I'll start to very slowly leave the room and just kind of look back and, and kind of closes the door behind you gazing at you before the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> I'm just gonna hover in the hallway yeah uh later so you feel the weight of something uh pressing down on the bed the kind of uh the spring underneath it kind of sags 
um, getting a little bit really close to you. Like normally there, there's only like a, a foot uh, between the, the springs and the, the carpet, uh, but now it's kind of like half of it as part of it's kind of brushing against your face and your, your body. Very claustrophobic. You can smell the body sweat of hundreds of people who've used this guest room before. Yeah, I just want to breathe, breathe as shallowly, shallowly as possible and, and try, try to, to reach out with my mother and my sister. Nothing. You are utterly, unequivocally alone in this. Well, well um, guess, guess I'm, I'm in the long haul. haul. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right, uh, Anton, what are you up to? I wanted to go check on Eduardo. <laughs> yeah, you go over. I mean, I, I <laughs> Ramira, are you very, very welcome in the kitchen? So yeah, Ramira, are you still uh, in the hallway? Yeah. So I see Anton approaching and try to make it look like I hadn't been hovering. I was just walking, and I'll just kind of say. Oh, hello, and then walk past him. How's everything going? <laughs> everything is going well. I, um, oh, I think it's this heat today. I just haven't been feeling quite myself. Is, is Eduardo in his room? Yes, yeah, he's in his room. He was- All alone. All, all alone, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just offered to get him some iced tea, but he's, in quite, he doesn't seem like himself. He was very uh, short with me. Should I check on him? I I think that would be a great idea. He didn't <laughs> he didn't want me in his room, but maybe 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 you would um, have a better luck. I'll I'll knock on the door. Um, yeah, so you feel the the weight lift off of you as uh, you see the. <laughs> shoes moving towards the door uh it creaks open and anton you can see eduardo uh peeking through the crack yes well hello mr fancy pants is that how you choose to greet me you're muted All right. So, Eduardo, how are you doing? Uh, más o menos. It was a long flight. Uh, I'm tired. I'm trying to get some sleep, but uh, it just feels like every family member keeps uh, preventing that. Well, we haven't seen you in years. Yeah, but it was a long flight. Funny, you look exactly the same as you did when <laughs> I saw you last. I believe you mentioned that before. Or mm. is there anything you want to do with that information? No. Um. All right. Uh, is anything? Uh, anything I can do for you? I mean, I think I don't know if it's a good time to take a nap. I think dinner's going to be ready soon. Would you like to do something, brother? What do you have in mind? Could you get a drink or something? Yeah. You want to come back to the kitchen with me? We could get a drink. If I recall, it's really not our place to be in the kitchen, but I think we can have drinks brought to us, if my memory serves me right. Hmm. Am I within earshot of this conversation? Uh, no, you're, you're, you're over there in the living room. You're probably watching. Warding. Yeah. Yeah. Go, you should research what you're watching. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what was on TV at that point in time. I'm, I'm probably smoking a, a cigar. Oh yeah. Uh, the sitting in my chair, mm-hmm. waiting, looking at uh, Saul playing around and uh, just, uh, okay. Complaining about, I love Lucy. Yeah, there we go. No, it doesn't <laughs> actually represent Cubans. Yeah. Show One of these days. What is this? <laughs> One of these days. Your cigar. <sighs> uh, yeah. Let, let's go, Anton. 
All right. Uh, and Eduardo will will come out with you and then close the door uh, behind him and and follow you down the hallway uh, to get a refreshing drink. Liersol. The door closes, and you once again feel that weight upon the bed, kind of sinking down, pressing against your face. Didn't he leave? You did hear footsteps in the conversation that did make you believe as such. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, if it feels like there's somebody in the bed, I'm not going to move. And this podcast having no beginning will have no end. Until next time. You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com. We've got an archive of past episodes, news, features, and reviews, along with all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on every other place you can find podcasts. Share your thoughts with us and share our podcast with your friends. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that's not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.